Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Draw with BJ Dell. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and in today's episode of Let's Draw, I'm going to show you guys how to draw a cute cartoon snail. We're going to go over sketching, inking, color flats, highlights, and shadows. So if you want to learn all about that and more, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and hop into the video. As always, I'm using the iPad Pro 12.9 inch. This is a first gen model along with the first gen Apple Pencil. The app is Procreate. The brush we're going to be using today is the standard Inker. Uh, this is part of my brush set that's available for purchase on Gumroad, and I will link that in the description below. So, what we're going to do today is we are going to draw a snail. So, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the one thing I do always starting out, if you're new to the channel, I always do my sketches in blue just kind of helps me visualize stuff a little bit better and the the whole idea with the sketch phase is just to really kind of keep it loose keep it flowing and natural and you don't want to worry too much about getting all the details in here during the sketch phase uh, what I do most of the time is just kind of just block in what the design is going to be where the major kind of components of the design go and then I worry more about the details, getting all the lines and everything right after I go back in later on. So once you go to the uh, the inking phase, that's where you can really kind of focus on making sure that everything is perfect. During the sketch phase, just stay loose with it. Have fun. Let's go ahead and get the eyes in here. I don't want to have a like a let's do like a kind of surprise look like he's seen some stuff in his day like something just happened and man he is surprised and I think I'm gonna pull the body down have the eyes come up just a little bit more it's one of the great things about digital is being able to make little small adjustments like this just so easy compared to traditional. So you get a lot of uh, breaks by using digital for sure. You got that. Let's go ahead and give him like a little trail of slime like he's leaving behind here. So you'll see the lines that I use, like I said, really loose, really kind of flowing. That's one thing key, especially with character design on something like this. Uh, a snail obviously is by nature pretty slow, uh, but you can really kind of make them more interesting and almost give a sense of motion that they're not going to have just by using, you know, really kind of fun lines that aren't too boring and basic. So we're going to go ahead and drop the opacity of this layer now because we're going to draw on top of that for our inking layer and it's going to make it easier to see. So made a new layer on top. We're going to switch our brush color to black and then just kind of start going in on it. Uh, you'll see here that just really doesn't matter where you start. I'll kind of just pick a spot and go for it. There's really no right or wrong way to do that. It's up to kind of your workflow and where you feel comfortable with starting. If something jumps out at you and that's what you want to go for, do it. Get this in here. You'll see too, like this little part here. That was not actually even part of my sketch. So that's why I was talking about just not worrying too much about the sketch stuff. Just because you can add stuff as you go. I'm going to move this over just a little bit here. Shrink it in. There we go. Just keep in perspective right. So now here, I think I'm going to switch over to the streamlined version of this brush. This I just use when I've got to do like long flowing lines like this just makes it a little bit easier to have control over what you want the brush to do and how you want it to look. So and you'll see here too, I'm varying the line weight. So I've got a thinner line weight up here. It's getting thicker towards the back with line weight and uh, especially doing tapered lines at the end. It's really just kind of practicing how much pressure you need to put on the actual pencil itself it's not something that you're going to be able to master right off the bat but the more you practice the more you get used to it the more natural it'll feel and you'll kind of be able to train yourself uh, to to know exactly how 
the pencil is going to react on the screen and what kind of effect you're going to get. So if you download some of these brushes and they aren't working exactly like you see in the videos, they're the exact same ones. It's just really key to be able to, you know, practice with this and get comfortable with the pressure that you need to achieve these results. Erase this just a little bit. If you don't like a taper at the end, instead of redoing it, you can just use your eraser to kind of clean that up. Sometimes that's a better way to go instead of uh, redrawing the line. But if you are uh, new to the channel, you'll see me undo lines quite a bit. Uh, and I've had people, you know, say, oh, I hate it because you, you do a line and then you erase it, you know, 10 times. But then, you know, other people watching the videos, it's kind of nice to see that somebody else does that too and you're not alone that you might not get the right line the first time that you lay it down so just know you're not alone there and uh it takes some trial and error to get the line you want don't be ashamed uh, you have to go back in and erase that's nothing to be ashamed of we all do it just give these lines here to kind of give some texture coming around the shell. And this I'm kind of just curving them as the, the shell itself curves so it keeps that kind of organic flow of the shell. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this tail coming out here in the back. You'll see these overlapping lines I'm doing here with the Taper on the end just kind of gives that nice wrinkled look like it's kind of bunched up on itself. That's one uh, tip that you can use too is, you know, to make your drawings more exciting, uh, more dynamic, more stuff going on is to use little tips and tricks like that. You know, you could have just pulled this straight out, but it's a lot more fun to have these extra little lines in there to, to give that look. So... So this is going to be a pretty big line wrapping around from here up to here. So I'm going to switch back to that streamline just to make sure I can get this all in one fail swoop here. So there we go. I just want to make sure that that one and that one kind of match up. It's pretty close. I can actually pull this one down a little bit and do another fold of skin there to make it look a little bit closer to those meeting up. Let's go ahead and switch back to the regular one here. We'll thicken this up at the bottom. There we go. Do another fold there. So that looks a little bit closer like they match up. Now let's go ahead and get this trail of slime coming off here. I'm going to have it almost trailing off the page, though, so... Oops, went back too far on that. There we go. With this, too, just you'll see I'm doing really loose strokes and then varying the line weight, too. I want this a lot thinner than the line weight for up here just because, obviously, uh, the slime's not going to have as much weight to it as the character itself. And just doing some of these lines to kind of break it up and show that there's holes there. Like it's not just one solid piece of slime coming back, but it's got some bubbles and stuff like that. We can even do some bubbles like this. There we go. Just kind of make it look gross there. And just some lines like this too, so it kind of has that trailing effect. All right, and let's go ahead and get these eyes knocked in then. So with this, uh, another great thing with Procreate is you can draw like this, hold down your finger, and it makes a perfect circle. You see this has got this little messed up part there, but that's okay because we're going to erase part of that section anyways for the eye because we want that to kind of have the fold of that eyelid down here kind of holding up the eye so we don't even want that full circle in there. So now that we've got that we can do these lines here to show where it connects. Get a little bit more of a taper there. 
There we go. Like so. A little bit a little extra dot right there. bring these around so it looks like one piece like it's almost connecting but not quite and then we can start to bring this other part down you'll see I've got the the overlap there just showing that kind of skin fold part again I want this one to be a little bit heavier though because it is sitting underneath so this one's going to be a little bit heavier of a line. And then we'll go ahead and get these knocked in over here as well. Looks pretty good, so let's go ahead and get the pupils in there. This is one of the fun things with cartooning too, is you know, with doing pupils, you can have them different sizes to relay expressions. Like I said, this one's gonna be that kind of surprise look. So doing one bigger than the other really kind of drives home that look that you're going for. And it just makes it look goofy and fun too. So that there. I'll switch back to the streamline because I'm going to do some lines here and kind of want the added assist on there with the lines there too you want to make sure that these are pretty thin because that's where that extra color is going to go for the iris so don't get those too thick or it's going to look a little off so there's that and let's give these kind of surprise lines coming out here too Little techniques like this can really kind of drive home the expression of a character as well. So we got that. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and throw some just some dots on his back here, just to kind of break things up a little bit, make it a little bit more exciting. We can add some other colors in here that's going to look kind of fun with these. Once again, just make sure. These are fairly thin. You don't want those competing with the actual outlines of the body. And didn't really go too overboard. Just, you know, some here and there. Nothing too crazy. So there we go. Looks good. I think this is a little bit thick here with the shell. And this is thinner up here on the eyes. So I want to add a little bit of thickness back here for the eyes. Just to match them up a little bit so they don't look too thin in comparison I think that's pretty good so we'll go ahead now let's turn off the sketch layer we can see what we're left with for the lines here and then we're gonna go ahead and color this guy in so uh, we're gonna go underneath the lines add a new layer and then let's go back up to the lines here and we're gonna set this as reference this is going to allow us to drop in the colors on this color flats layer. So let's go ahead and get kind of a brownish color for the shell. And then just dragging and dropping. You can see that allows us to drop that in really nice. Actually, that's kind of plain. Let's go I kind of want to do brighter than that. Let's do something kind of off the wall. Let's do a bright pink. And then for the color of the body... Let's do kind of a blue color. Be a little bit more fun there. Didn't fill these in. Oops. And let's get a lighter blue color. This is going to be for the spots here. So you don't want those to compete with the body color. We want to be pretty uh, obvious that they are a different color. You'll see there I just hit the line. Make sure you don't do that because it will affect. You see if you get in here, it'll put that color around the lines and it looks really bad. And it sucks if you don't catch it right away and you keep going because then you're eventually going to see it and realize that it happened. 
something. You have to undo back to whatever point that you made the mistake, and that one's no fun. So you got these in there. Let's go ahead and get the mouth then. And do a darker color in here. Let's get the pink for the tongue. There we go. And then for the eyes, let's just do the uh, super bright blue. How does that look? Eh, maybe like a green. Give it a little bit different color so it doesn't blend in as much to everything we've already got. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Get this little pink part in here in between the teeth, the gum. And then maybe just a really kind of light greenish blue for this trail of slime. So you hit that line again. Back that out. Come on. There we go. All right. So we've got all of the color flats laid in. Uh, one thing I want to do here, let's play around with this and let's see if we can make this line color a little bit different. Instead of using the black, let's go for a really dark blue. We're using that as a base color and just dropping it down. So we're going to select the line layer. Then we're going to go back in and we're going to hit fill. There we go. I think it looks cool. So you can see here, instead of the black, we've got that darker blue. It's almost black, but not quite. It just makes it a little bit more interesting of a design. So now that we've got that done, let's turn off this background so we can see where we need white. Uh, let's get some white here and throw that in. This can be achieved too if you just change to a different background color. Uh, something like this will allow you to lay in the color flats and know exactly where you're at. I don't always do that with these videos just because having it on the white makes it easier to see in the videos. So keep that in mind as you're doing your own work. You can always change that and it probably help you out quite a bit. All right, so now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and make a new layer. We're gonna go and start on our shadows. So what I like to do here is we'll set this to alpha lock. This is, oh, no, I'm sorry, not alpha lock, clipping mask. This is gonna basically use the information here on this layer, and it's not gonna let us go outside of the lines. So it's gonna make our uh, coloring in just a ton easier. And you'll see that with this, I basically will start coloring in with a solid black until I get a decent amount colored in. And then I'll drop the opacity. I just want a decent amount colored in so I can see how it's going to affect the different color layers. Um, so we've got, you know, well, they're all in the same layer, but, you know, the different colors here. We've got the, the pink of the shell. We've got the blue up here. And once I get these in, then I'll be able to adjust the opacity and see exactly where it needs to be to look natural. Got that. Let's go ahead and drop down the opacity now. So you want it dark, but not too dark. It's a lot of times I think people starting out, they really make their shadows too dark and it looks uh, like it's almost like a horror type design just because the shadows are so dark you just want it to be the hint of that different color there so we've got that so let's go ahead and get some more shadows in here the way the shells wrapping around i'm going to switch back to that streamline once again just to get that nice curve here So for the light source, as you can see, we've got the light source coming in from this way. That's why the lines here are thinner uh, for line weight. Not only does it make your design more engaging and more fun and draws the viewer in, but line weights also are an easy way to establish uh, where the light source is coming in before you even get to the point of adding in shadows or highlights just because thicker lines are going to represent a kind of shadowed area almost. 
lighter lines are going to show that's where the highlights are. There we go. Get these once again, just kind of building this up to show the lines that we've already got here. That's what I'm using those kind of as a reference for. Just drawing those lines down further. Looks good. Add some shadows here around these to kind of build up these lines now. Once again, these are on the back side of these lines because the light's coming in from the right hand side of the page. these two make sure that the tapers match up because you don't want this coming off too far so you want that to taper along with the lines that you've already got there Probably just add some extra lines in here too just to uh, make it more interesting give it a little bit more flair to it Bit more texture you can even do some loose lines like that too just to uh, make it look a little bit more organic and not you know super super boring let's turn this back to white now there we go Get some shadows in here on the mouth Around here with the teeth Even though the light's coming in here, of course, this is going to be kind of underneath everything, so you're still going to have a pretty good shadow on there. And we'll wrap a shadow around this back here, too. Honestly, with shadows, it's just... Uh, trial and error and practicing once you get used to it you'll kind of just be able to see exactly where the shadows go i know a lot of people struggle with where to put the shadows uh, i did number one i, I kind of talk about shadows and highlights in all the uh, let's draw videos but i did one in particular about shadows and highlights uh, it's the turkey design one which i will go ahead and link that in the description or in a card right here so you guys can check that one out it's in the uh, digital art tutorials playlist so definitely check that out if that's something that you guys struggle with it's something I think that could be pretty valuable if you are struggling and you'll see I did all all those lines back there and I'm actually gonna cover up some because I need this back shadow to be a little bit heavier just because that is furthest away from the light source so see some of that work that I did is now being covered up but it's the other thing too if you you know do stuff like that don't worry about oh I spent all that time doing that and now I've got to cover it covered up I don't want to cover it up just because you know I took all that time uh, definitely if it's gonna make it look good or make it look better you know don't worry about wasting some of the work that you've previously done if you see something that's kind of off that needs addressed so like this back here I'm gonna shade this in quite a bit more with some shadow just because that's the farthest furthest away from the light source so it's going to have kind of the most shadows on there and then what i'll do is i'll go back in and break this up just a little bit I've talked about this before it's not necessarily uh how shadows are going to work but i don't like having this totally in the shadows like that so along the edges i'll just go ahead and erase the shadow so it almost gives it some edge highlights, which technically back here it's not going to have, but I would rather have this than that solid shadow back here. It just breaks it up a little bit more and makes it a little bit more interesting. So there's that. Let's pull 
this down and around a little bit more here too. There we go. I think this one I still want more back here. Yeah, good enough. And this, I kind of like want this all down here shadowed, I think. Just because that shell is so heavy and the way that this light source is coming in, I think that bringing that back is going to be a little bit better. See, I'm just going back and forth with this just because I want that really kind of nice flow that matches the way that the lines are there already for the outline. Otherwise, it's going to look off. So there we go. And then, like I said, pull out some more highlights here just to break this up so it's not just a solid black all the way back. Probably put some of these dots in here too just to break it up a little bit. Like so, and let's get these bottom parts here because the lip coming down, of course, that's going to give off some shadows there because it's got some weight to it. Bring that there, and same thing here. All right. I think it's pretty good for the shadows, so well, we need some more back here in this slime. This one I'm not going to pay as much attention to just because I can do these lines like this and it'll add some shadows in there too. I want it to go over the bubble though. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and make a new layer now. This is going to be our highlights layer. Once again, we're going to set this to clipping mask and then we're going to do the same thing just like we did with the shadows. We're going to lay down some solid white here for the highlights. And then once we get it on both the pink and the blue, then we'll go ahead and drop the opacity so that we can tell exactly what's going on, how light we need to make it. There we go. So let's go ahead and drop the opacity now. And once again, I think this is where a lot of people struggle because they make the highlights too bright. So it's almost just like a white sitting there. You just want it to give the illusion that you've got a little bit of shine from that light source. You don't want it to be solid white. You don't want it to be, you know, close to white. You want to have that base color really kind of doing the majority of the work there. So keep that in mind as you do your highlights. With highlights, honestly, I don't do as much highlights uh, as I do the shadows. I usually focus a little bit more on the shadows than the highlights. I'm going to kick back to the shadows here and kind of do some extra stuff with this fold like that. There we go. One last thing I want to do, make another layer here. We're going to set this as clipping mask, which actually, since it's between these, it already set. But I'm going to go ahead and do some shadows on the eyes. The reason I'm doing this on a separate layer and not doing it on the shadow layer is since white is such a bright color, if you went ahead and did your shadows on that same layer, uh, it's gonna look super, super dark on this white. Otherwise, if you try to adjust it and make it so it's not super dark, then everything you did back here is gonna look super light and you're not really gonna be able to see it. So that's why you kind of have to do it separately when you've got colors like that that are so different from each other. I just wanted to add that in there so I could get just a little bit more. And you can see how dark that white is down here, which I don't mind it on the, the teeth using that previous layer. I just don't really like to do it on the eyes. I'll go ahead and add a couple more, just kind of highlight marks around here. Just give a little bit more shine there. A little bit more stuff going on. All right.
right. And there we go. That is how you draw a cartoon snail. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you liked today's video, too, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And definitely hop on over to Facebook after this video. Join the Keep Creating a Learn, Draw, Share art community group over there. It's a group I started for viewers like you that want to share their artwork and meet like-minded artists. I'm going to link it in the description below. As for me, I can be found online at bjadell.com as well as on Instagram and Twitter at bjadell. So until next time, keep creating.